Now in the free mountain lands of the West, ancient cities sprang into fresh and modern life. Chief of them all was the new capital of free China, Chongqing. Here on the cliffs high above the Yangtze River, the Chinese had re-established their government. They knew, however, that the people of the city would not be safe from Jap air raids. The memories of Shanghai were fresh in their minds. And in the sandstone cliff on which the city is built, thousands of workmen rushed the construction of enormous caves as shelters for the people and for the pitifully few machines more important than life. To the Japs, Chongqing became the heart of the Chinese nation they were determined to conquer. Destroy Chongqing, and they would break the spirit of new China. As they couldn't reach the city by land, they would send their bombers to blast it from the face of the earth. Japanese armadas, slow and obsolete Chinese planes made a suicidal attempt to defend Chongqing. Neither Japanese planes nor Japanese bombs could destroy the life of the city. For not only the people, but the factories had gone underground, where the vital machines could operate by day and by night, safe from bombs and shrapnel. This time, the Chinese had anticipated their enemy. In spite of bombs and fire and destruction, this time the Chinese stood fast. Flaming Chongqing became the symbol of their indestructible spirit. <laughs> 